there's a uh, there's a hawk right in the middle of the beat, <laughs> pissing off all the ravens. <laughs> Didn't really touch, didn't touch the bait at all, or I would have taken a shot. She just kind of moseyed around and went down a hill and uh, into the bush. So, um, we got a cold front coming in, so I'm, next time I can sit is, oh gosh, Thursday morning maybe. Um, but yeah, man. Um, yeah, gray wolf came in exactly where I thought. She just po poked her head out. It was very spooky. Um, Yeah, that's your neighbors. Well, morning. I'm just out setting. Got the cot in there. Bring my heater in, got my iPod and the beats are over there. There's one there. And there's another one right there. Those are all wolf tracks out there. Looks like they hit the bait last night. So uh yeah. I'm gonna spend the night out here and uh see what that brings and kind of go from there but it's only uh oh goodness it's only like minus 19 a day maybe but uh there's some big tracks coming in here like giant giant wolf big big wolf i'll uh i'll take a walk over and show you See, they're pushing my sh my blinds right here, and they're pushing bush right. That's a big track. I'm gonna try and see. try and find one that's a little bit uh, more distinct. Uh, same spot I hunted last year. I ended up getting a shot at too. There we go. I'm size 13. But and they're 
ravens are <laughs> all the way to my bait. That's crazy. And uh, yeah, just out on Red Lake and just in the middle of nowhere. Only took only took the wolves seven days, exactly seven days to hit the bait. So they hit it on this past Friday. It's uh, Tuesday today, so looks like they're back. Push some, uh, I put some fresh meat out, and uh, we'll see. I'm gonna do some calling as well. See if I can get one to come out, but that guy, oh my gosh, that big wolf. Again, came right. That's like 25 yards. That's, and there's just wolf track everywhere in this bay. It kind of starts over at the point, and then it comes all the way over to this point here. So, this whole bay is just all wolf. I'll check back in once I'm all uh, set up and settled in. Kind of go from there. Might end up getting shot out of shot at a wolf today, but we'll see. Back out here. It's got some supplies. as the night goes on and hopefully this pack's not nocturnal but it's hard to tell but uh, yes you can't really see too much but got my uh, my bed set up and just my coat up there my backpack and stuff you can't see but yeah not too bad friggin right feels good Good to be over here. Now I just need to see a wolf. And from me too. From me to the, the baits is about uh, 220 yards. So we'll see. <sighs> well, here we are. Um, shooting light is over. So I'll probably just keep calling through the night. And I'm going to see, test this propane heater. I got my rifle there. I got to get that away into the bag and just drying out my stuff here. It's about, just going to check the weather. 
minus 25, minus 21 tomorrow, and then minus 29 on Thursday. Uh, Saturday's supposed to be not too bad. Saturday into Sunday. I'll probably do another overnighter on Saturday. Um, yeah, so not bad, but I might keep calling, but I might, uh, at some point here, I won't be able to see anything. So, uh, I mean, it shows up on the camera. I, I can see a bit. My bait's just uh, over there. You can see the wind's just blowing. And, um, yeah, just call, but I'll use the, I'll start at a low volume, because if I, I don't want to spook them, starting at, like, volume 20 on the Fox Pro, it'll, uh, if they're on the bait or whatever, they'll get freaked out, but, I mean, regardless, if I'm calling at a low volume and they're on the bait 200 yards away, it's gonna probably bother them a bit, but, I think they would, uh, it's essentially just to bring them in and have them stick around, kind of be curious, and they might think another pack's coming in to take their food, so might uh, make them stick around till morning, morning late. Morning shooting late is 7.45, so I'll get up at 6 and get situated and have a bite to eat, make a tea, and yeah, I'll just kind of go from there. But uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna see if I can this heater. I've never used it before, and that window's gonna stay open. So uh, for ventilation purposes. But it just takes the chill off, just a little bit of a chill, and it's just just the one. I have two sunflowers. Yeah, I'll just leave it on, uh, leave it on low, and see how long that tank lasts. Um, yeah, I got a minus 40 sleeping bag, so should be okay. But, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys probably in the morning unless I hear some calling at night. I might turn this back on, but, uh, yeah. Oh, these sh almost white out. Okay, my blind. I'll zoom in. There's my blind. You can barely see the red. Where is it? Where's my finger? Oh, you can't even see it. I'm on that point. I'm right there. I'm still shaking. This wolf. Followed my sled tracks around. He was he was right in front of my blind. And right there. Excuse my language. Like he was maybe 25 yards away. So I get my 308. Where is it here? I got 308 with me. And uh I mean I'm on four and a half zoom and I'm uh I just dialed my scope into 250 250 yards the other day with a buddy. And uh I just wasn't confident in that shot. Just so close and just like, ah. So 
funny enough, the last three days or the three uh, outings I've been in uh, out here, um, every time I take the shoreline, I'll take the shoreline home to hide my uh, sled tracks so they're not right out in the open and people see me turn into bays and stuff. And uh, sorry, my mouth is frozen. And uh, so I have my 22 with me and the scope is, anyway, here's my little 22. And it's just funny enough, I sighted that thing in for 25 yards for grouse. So I put the 308 down and at this point, the, the, the wolf is standing there and it's looking in my direction, but he's, his head isn't like straight on. He's, it's kind of out to the right. He's kind of looking at the edge of the peninsula. And, uh, so I don't know if he sees me or not. And I just take a shot and I'm aiming at his head. Cause I'm at this point, I'm like vital shot. He's going to be running and running and running and running. Um, I just didn't have faith in the 22. So I just took, I just, I knew it was going to hit straight aim for the head. I didn't even know I hit him. There's no blood trail. There's absolutely no blood trail. But he came running over here, passed, and just dropped. Holy. Oh, oh, holy crap. And I just brought the sled over. Look at this. Look at that dog. Oh, holy crap. Oh my god. Look at the paws. Holy crap. Oh man, that's a big dog. So I'm going to just get this set up and oh, oh I'm vibrating. Oh, shit. and these wolves, they keep this, this black one, this black one, the other day he came out from this ridge here. Let me zoom out. He came out from this ridge and he was standing here. I just saw his tail flicker as he jumped down to the ice and he came up, didn't, didn't hit this bait, came around this bait and was sniffing around back and forth. He's probably stood there for two or three minutes and I, it's, it was still dark. It was like 724 and, and legal shooting light was uh, 744. So he was about 20 minutes off, but, and he tucked himself uh, into the bush kind of just behind me, but These ravens are wondering what's going on. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to get dialed in here. And... Oh, that's that's insane. And that wolf smell. Yeah, I've smelled that more times than I believe. Because you know what? Like, this is my first wolf. But I've smelt that smell so many times before in the bush. That is a distinct smell. And he obviously let his bowels go. But, oh, that's got to be, I don't know how big that is, but it's a big, big dog. All right. Well, I always carry, ever since I started uh, baiting wolves, I carry these, uh, they're actually from my dad's old work. Uh, they're like heat resistant gloves, but um, they just smell like meat. They're my, uh, I set all my rabbit snares and... Um, yeah, I set all my rabbit snares with it, and I also, which I don't know if it's a good idea to set rabbit snares, because I use these to also bait wolves. Like, when I see the, this bait here behind me, when I pick it up, um, I don't even know where my big gloves are. My big, I have big mittens, um, black ones, snowmobile gloves, and I don't like touching anything, and I, I use a wax um, on those gloves, and uh, the wax is like a petroleum, and it's got a little bit of a smell to it, so... I don't want to touch anything. And they're my good gloves too. I don't want to be touching meat and, and dead shit and, and whatnot with my good gloves. Especially when my heated uh, snowmobile grips are, are on. I'll be smelling ground beef cooking or something like that. But uh, I'm going to see uh, if I can drag this dog over. Holy shit. His canines are huge. Oh, okay. Oh. Yes, bud. That is a large wolf. Holy crap. He's got a beautiful white patch on his. 
chest. Holy crap. This thing's giant. Oh, there we go. Big Northwest Ontario timber wolf. Holy. That's big. There we go. Into the sleeve. Wow. Look at this thing. It takes up the whole. Holy crap. Holy crap. I didn't even, I didn't even check. Like, I shot him in the head. I mean, it was like kind of point blank. I think I kind of hit him off to the side, just above the eyebrow. But once I get him thought out or, well, not thought out, but holy crap, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap. Oh my gosh. Oh, insane.